Welcome back to our Subaru engine build presented by Valvoline. Today it's finally time to finish assembling the short block. Doug's got his uh, ring gapping machine set up here, but before we get to that, we figured to give you a quick chat about the differences between the OE piston and these JE FSR pistons. Dub was mentioning that there's a big difference in the skirt design. Can you maybe run us through that? Yeah, uh, so the JE piston has asymmetrical skirt design. So the top uh, skirt, the one that runs the top of the cylinder is very small, so it has very little drag. And the bottom one is much larger because the Subaru piston is always sitting on its side because it's flat. Right, and this guy has big, bigger skirts on both sides. Yeah, on both sides. It's going to cause more friction, more drag. More yeah, heat, and maybe. it's heavier. It is right. A heavier like to drag the sure. thing around is more work. Uh, the other thing is the distance between the top ring and the top of the piston mm -hmm. uh, is very thin in comparison to the forged piece from GE, and that's where you always see those. You hear about ring land failure. Basically, the top bit of the piston breaks off, or even in between the up, the top and mid ring, mm -hmm. even it can crack in there. And then like those pieces start floating around and you lose compression. So that's your classic ring land failure on a Subaru. Yeah. The OE piston also appears to have a coating on the skirts, but JE has a new coating that they're using on their skirts, which is called Perfect Skirt, which uh, implies a level of perfection in their skirting material, which from reading up on it, it does sound pretty amazing. It is a proprietary three-stage bonded on coating that's very different than your typical spray on coating. You were saying that you see this coating wear off over time. Yeah, this this will, like after 100,000 K or even sooner, will basically you'll get down to the aluminum. Right. This, on the other hand, is designed to last the service life of the piston. And the beauty of it is that it fills the gap that you would typically have a slightly larger gap when going to a forged piston because of expansion. And you can, you can get piston, cap, uh, piston slap on like yep. cold startup, which can throw like false uh, knock codes with OE ECUs and so on. This fills that gap up and gets rid of those issues. And apparently it also makes a perfect seal. As soon as you f fire the motor up, it'll sort of like true itself to the bore yeah. so that you, you end up with a really good seal. Okay, time to walk us through the, uh, the ring gapping procedure. Is that what it's called, ring gapping? Sure. All right, we're calling it ring gapping, well, everybody. Set the ring end gap. The ring end gap, all right. So where does it start? So the two rings you have to worry about most, I mean, is the top ring, mm -hmm. which is normally shiny like this one, okay, and the mid ring, which is normally dark nitrated like nitrate this. coating, okay. Um, I would start with the the top or the first ring, set it into the bore like that. Okay, we'll use a piston to push it in, so it's perfectly centered inside the bore yeah. and then just like stop it where the piston stops like that so mm -hmm. you know it's not it's not, not crooked angle, it's yeah. not cocked or anything mm -hmm. like that and that's the top ring so the number we're looking for is 0 0.018 she's tight it's tight okay so we're gonna have to take this out bring it over to the medieval <laughs> grinder grinder here yeah Make sure it's squared up on the wheel. And because you can't re-add material, yes. you just take like the tiniest little bit off. Yeah. Three turns like that. And recheck it. And then recheck it, come back into the block, put it back in the block and all right. So we got this top ring dialed in at 018. And now let's go with the mid. This one, like I said, is 020, which we're good. It's actually a little bit looser than JE specification. Okay. But as a secondary ring, we're good with Not it. Not too bad. Yeah. Okay, great. So we have to do that three more times, and then we're ready to put pistons in the holes? No, then we got to put the rings onto the pistons. Well, this one goes on the top, right? Well, I don't think so. That oh. wavy one doesn't doesn't look <laughs> familiar to me, so I'm going to go with no. Okay, so that's the oil control ring. It goes in the very bottom groove. Okay. Okay, this one you can just slide into position. And we're going to try and offset all the gaps for the rings in different places. 
ultimately once the engine starts running they all rotate anyways but for that first start you want to make sure that they're all not lined up in a row so I have this gap for the oil the main oil control ring which means I'm gonna put the next ring 90 degrees to it okay and these are the only rings you can install and spiral on like this okay by hand like you can't twist a ring like I'm the mid or a top ring like I'm doing to this okay and then I come around to the other side and I'll do the same thing over here on the top so next step is going to be to put the mid ring on all these rings are marked well not always but in this case yeah the rings that GE supplies they're all marked they have an N on them Okay. The end always faces up on the piston. Okay. So you don't want to flip it the other way, is because this, if you can, you can't see it, but there's like a little ridge cut in this. Okay. This actually scrapes oil off the cylinders. It's going down. So if you have it upside down, the scraping edge won't be gotcha. scraping. Okay. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can install this ring. You could go mm -hmm. by hand. Mm -hmm. Or you can use one of these. There's a few few different designs for this type, type of tool. tool. Okay. This one kind of holds, steadies the whole ring for you. Mm -hmm. There's other ones that just have these little nubs here that will just yeah, spreaders. Some, yeah, it's just like really small. Slide it on. Yeah. Anyway, so you just open this thing up and slide it down. Kind of guide it, get it to your the right. And just slide it off, and then it's sitting floating in there. Nice. Nicely. All right, Dove, is it time to put these in the block yet or what? Yeah, pretty much ready to slide the pistons in. Okay. A few things we have to do first is wipe this out, wipe the bore out, make sure it's clean of any debris from, you know. Sitting it's, around? It's clean from the machine shop, but, I mean, it's been a day yeah, sitting here. No harm in giving it another so cleaning. So give it a wipe down. We'll get some fresh uh, high zinc oil onto the cylinder walls. This is our VR1 conventional oil again? Non yeah, yeah, conventional oil. This is, yeah, you want like uh, high zinc conventional oil. So okay. The ZR1 non-synthetic. Get that covered up. You don't need to soak it either. Like some people are like spraying oil around like crazy. You don't mm -hmm. need just enough that when the piston goes in, it just slides down nicely. Okay. And it has a little bit of protection. Um, so we're starting with piston number three. Okay. Let's which see. is this guy. So you've numbered them nicely? Yeah, because these are all numbered in correlation to how I cut the rings. Okay. So I used each piston to fit the appropriate rings in each bore. Okay. Um, choices for getting these in the block. Yes. Typical uh, compression style spring t uh, ring tool. Yes. Very common. Works okay, mm -hmm. but is not as precise as something like this from ARP. It's a tapered... Uh, piston installer it goes on top of the bore and you basically the the this whole piece is tapered all the way down so as you push the piston down it sinks the rings in and then pops right into the cylinder okay we're not using one of these today okay because I lent mine out for this particular bore to somebody okay and I didn't get it back yet ah so we're so gonna go with the old we're gonna, school. We're gonna go old, old school way. I mean, we might as well. It's the majority of people that will be doing this at home will would have one of these anyway. So I'm just gonna oil up these skirts a little bit with some uh, regular oil, and as well, I'm just gonna put a little dab of oil inside where the piston pins are gonna have to slide through because you want them to slide in nice and easy. Okay. Get them lubed up, and then make sure after all that handling that the ring placement is still where we wanted it and then we'll start uh, compressing it in this fancy uh, tool. I guess you need that to be tight enough to compress the, the rings but oh, yeah. not so tight that you can't push it out of the tool? Well, you, it's, you it's, it it's kind of, it's a, it's a fine line. Mm -hmm. I mean if you go like way too tight you won't, it won't come out nice right. and easy. And if you go too loose, the rings aren't going to fit. What will happen is as we're tapping this in, mm -hmm. you'll see one of the rings will just pop out here and then you'll be stuck. We've got to take it apart mm -hmm. and start over. 
So, cylinder number three, pre-lined up. Bam! Just like that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Look at that, everybody. There's a piston in a hole. Time to put the wrist pins in, and that looks like a fun job on this motor. Yeah, it's super easy. Just slide it in. Yeah? Yeah. Well, why don't you show us how super easy it really is? No, it's not that easy. <laughs> These motors are a unique design, and this is one of the probably more unusual parts of the process. Isn't yeah, it? so normally when you rebuild an engine, you'd attach the piston to the connecting rod, yeah. and then drop the connecting rod with the piston into the bore, and then attach it to the crank afterwards. Right. This is kind of backwards, where we attach the rods to the crank first, then drop the pistons in. They need to line up the rod end with the hole in the piston, and then slide the pin in. Through these little through, windows that with, they give you. Through the little service hole, yeah. Wow. Oh, like a boss. Yeah, that's only the first step. Oh, look at that. There you go. That was uh, pretty slick. No. Nah. Sometimes you get on first try, sometimes you this don't. This tool is specifically designed for this job? This is actually a tool for another piston manufacturer that uses a different uh, locking clip style. Okay. But it's just convenient because it perfectly holds the pin in, so you have like a handle to kind so of maneuver. Bit of, a yeah. bit of leverage in. Yeah. Okay, so now I guess there's a, like a snap ring that holds the, the pin in there? Yep. And this must also be fun to put in place. Eh, it's not as bad, since we've modified the snap-on Snap ring pliers. Okay. It's a lot easier. All right. That's it. Yeah. Right. So I got to inspect his work here, everybody. My professional eye in there. Wow. It, it looks like it's in the groove. <laughs> well done, sir. Thank you. So we got to do that to what? Three more times? Three more times. And then we got to put. Rear main, separator plate, all co we gotta cover up all these holes. Dress it all up. Yep. All right, let's get to it. And just like that, we have a fully assembled short block. That was easy. That's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm glad to see it have come together so quickly and easily for me. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next in the process? Uh, oil pump, cylinder heads, Cams, cam gears, oil pan, Many engine things. mounts, intake manifold, water, you know, like water pipes, the hard stuff. All that's left is everything else, which you will see in the next video on this build series. So we're calling this one a wrap. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Thank you, Dove and Nam and NB Auto for all their hard work. And thank you, Valvoline, for making this all possible. Be sure to go check out uh, teamvalvoline.com if you want more technical content or information on their products. And go to speedacademy.shop if you want to get yourself a hat or even some go fast parts. That's it. That's all. That's all we got. Okay.